Did Alec tell you there had been a recovery of $505,000 already in the case at that time? No. Did he ever tell you there had been a recovery of $505,000 at that time? No. Was there a recovery at that time of $505,000 as you come to find out? Uh, later on. Later on you found out? Yes. And did he ever pay you one dime? No. Did the defendant ever tell you that he also had a $5 million umbrella policy? No. Did he ever tell you that there had been a recovery against that? No. Did he ever tell you that there had been a recovery for $3.8 million against that? No. Did he ever pay you one penny of $3.8 million? No. Unbelievable. I'm talking about Alec Murdoch. On the witness stand, that was Tony Satterfield. His mom was the housekeeper for years for the Murdochs. Basically raised Alec Murdoch's kids. So when she died in his house, he said, I'll take care, you know, I'll take care of the, you, you guys, you kids. You know, you've got a case. I've got insurance policy. We'll take care of it all. Gives the case to his friend. They collect like $4 million. They don't give a dime. Not even a dime to the kids. Well, all that came out in the double murder trial, but now that's going to be part of another trial. Here's Eric Bland. He's the attorney who has represented uh, the Satterfield family, Gloria's family, uh, against Alec Murdoch. This judge then put his foot on his throat and said, you know what? I'm also sitting on top of your other 90 cases. And what are we going to do? We're going to schedule them immediately. And when I got out of the court, I talked with Creighton Waters. You know what he told me? Satterfield case up next month. They're going to schedule it. Next month, Alec Murdoch back on trial. Let's bring back into think tank Al Wunsch, Darnell Cross, and Jennifer Brandt. Uh, Darnell, you know, you get convicted of double murder. You know, you don't go to Disney. You go to prison. But for Alec Murdoch, it looks like he's just going to end up in another courtroom or perhaps the same exact courtroom uh, being charged with these financial crimes for stealing like $4 million uh, from one of his clients who was also... Uh, the son of, of the woman who raised his children as the housekeeper. Well, well the, the, the sad part about this is that uh, he can't put on any character witnesses because at the first trial, he already said that he's a, he, he's a bad character. He's a bad character. He, uh, he's a thief. He's on drugs. Uh, he said all the things that he thought that could save him from murder, but it'll be okay because it's, at least it's civil. But uh, now those civil wrongs, uh, are going to end up in criminal court. He already made all the confessions, so it's going to be a, a real hard, hard road to hold for him on this one. Yeah, Jennifer Brand, what are your thoughts about uh, bringing Alec Murdoch back inside the courtroom to now try him for all of these financial crimes, which were part of the evidence in the double murder case, but now become their own criminal trials? Yeah, I mean... I you know, the problem is, where, where are they going to get the money now to pay back and... and oh, they got the money. They, was, they, they got the money. They tracked down they, the money. They got the money. His that's lawyers... That's what they have to do. I yeah. mean, they have to... That's really what we need. We need these people to to be treated fairly and to get some money for their mother. I mean, and to find out really what happened to her. I mean, I think that that's also... Uh, on their minds, you know? Hearing all that went on with Maggie and Paul... I mean, what are they thinking now about their mom and the fact that they got nothing for her death? She's gone. They're left without her. No money. Um, they need justice for sure. You know, Al, the one thing that the the attorney, Eric Bland, he's been on the show tons of times. People are watching him almost every night here. Um, they are saying that they believe it was an accident, too. But... Um, I, you know, the circumstances, the dogs are there again. She falls down the stairs, the insurance policy, boom, boom, boom. Someone dies in his house and, and he gets rich? Like, how does that work? Well, first of all, they, they have to believe it's an accident or insurance doesn't cover. So, of course, they're going to say it's an accident. It'd be foolish for them to say it was a murder because then the insurance coverage is gone. What I don't understand is about the lawyer that handled the case, on be, that was referred the case by um, by Murdoch, um, what his culpability is in with this. Oh, he's and in I trouble, too. He, he's in big I trouble. Gotta, he has to be. Because yeah. I know in New Jersey, when you settle a case as a, a personal injury case, the insurance carrier for the defendant sends a letter to the, uh, you know, the your clients, the victim's uh, household, 
and informs them that the matter has been settled and that the check is being sent to the lawyer for whatever the amount was that the case settled. I can't imagine that that's not the situation in South Carolina. So, I mean, this guy did a lot of backflips to be able to keep these, you know, poor kids in the dark with regards to the amount of money that was settled in this case. And and kudos, though, to the attorney, because that's a lot of money for a, a trip and fall case in, uh, you know, for an older woman. It was... Uh, well, Alec Murdoch was basically, you know, you know, making sure it was nice and big because he knew none of it was going to go to the kids. It was going to go in his pocket, which brings me to my next question, Darnell Crossland. This guy's talking about opioids um, and, you know, $4 million, and suddenly, you know, it disappeared somehow, some way. Uh, do you think it's possible that Alec Murdoch was, was buying millions of dollars of opioids and is still no, able to no function and work and not OD? No, not at all. Not at all. He, he definitely wasn't uh, Chris Rock in New Jack City where, where he was strung out on crack. Um, this guy was a whole different type of addict. He was the addict that he made himself be. And I think he probably knew way ahead of time that he was going to set the scene uh, for uh, times like this where he can play. You think there's some money buried somewhere? I mean, he was, he was making seven figures just legitimately and then stealing millions more from people. Do you think like maybe somewhere, I don't know if it's, it's probably not in the Dominican Republic, but maybe one of those <laughs> islands down there where they don't keep track of stuff. Maybe that's where all his money is. I think he had well, a big well, drug problem. He, he I had all think those... he had a drug problem. And I think he was definitely spending a lot of money on drugs and other things. Who knows what? Millions but... and millions? No. This is well, millions, millions, millions and millions, but drugs, a lot of money. Be... A lot of money. Not that much. Not they, they, that were, much. they were talking no, about at close. one point, that at one point he had a $50,000 a week habit. I mean, that's insane. If anyone with that kind of a habit would, would be basically you know, a, a, a bunch of peat moss. I mean, you could not possibly function. And even if like, you know, the, the Oxy or Vicodin or whatever goes for like $75 a pill and, and that type of a thing, $50,000 at $75 a pill, uh, $50,000 worth of that would, they would kill you. I can't imagine that he had that kind of tolerance because he didn't look like through the, out the entire trial, like he had DTs or anything like that. It didn't look like he was going under withdrawal and someone with that kind of a, a drug habit. Well, he said he's been clean for 500 days. Like Darnell said. He's been clean for 500 days, Al. That's still that's still not, not at $50,000 a, a week? No. Yeah, people in terms have of said terms that they saw <laughs> him, that they thought he had a bad drug had, habit and that he was detoxing at one point in time. I think one of the one of the girlfriends or the friends of the, the boys had testified to that or had said that. In terms of point in, time. in terms of Vinny, in terms of the settlement, um he had a he had a policy. So I had cases like this where a kid goes out and causes an auto accident, there's not enough money on the car. And the parents have a umbrella policy, so we can get that policy. So Al Alec made it clear and probably made it possible for his insurance company to just throw in the policy. So that's why they settled for so big. It wasn't that the PI lawyers did a great job. They just consented to the policy. No, the, the lawyer did a great job. Nobody's settling for $3.9 million, uh, you know, if they just because they say it's worth $3.9 million. That's not how it works. I mean, you have to work that case up very well in order to get into that kind of a number. That's an extraordinarily high number on a wrongful death case. Well, if you have okay, a defendant who's a, kind a of fall. giving you all the facts that you need, like Alec knew the road to a big settlement, so he was saying all the right things as a defendant in it, right? Being, you yeah. know, with the insurance well, coverage that would that would blow the whole thing up. That's liability-wise, you're right. But, I mean, damages still have to be proven, okay? It's not enough to have liability. You also need to have damages. And you got to be able to de do demonstrative uh, damages that could show that this individual's life was worth that amount of money. And, I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. It's not like you walk in, I said, give me $3.9 million, and they go, um, cash or charge? You know, I mean, like, they don't do that. It's a very difficult situation to put that kind of money on a case, especially in South Carolina. I'll just give you one story. It's a real story in Connecticut. It's got to be short, Jennifer, though. It's got to be short. I'm yeah. over time. I'm over time right now. Go ahead. Jennifer could appreciate this. A woman's getting divorced. She has a divorce lawyer. Her husband has a lawyer. And at the end, she gets this big settlement. They said, how'd you do that? She said, I was sleeping with the lawyer. She said, with your lawyer? She said, no, with my husband's lawyer. So, so Alec was just playing the other side. There you go. Yeah. Up next. Yeah. 
On the docket tonight, the Black Swan murder trial. Former ballerina Ashley Benefield is accused of shooting and killing her husband and father of their little baby after accusing him of trying to poison her and the baby. We have a preview of this upcoming trial on Court TV. Sunday night, before she had a chance to ever see a judge, Ashley shot and killed him so that he would not get his hands on those evaluations. This is a case of revenge. An ice cream man is mugged, beaten, and robbed. Now he stands accused of murder. He became obsessed with finding who shot him. Was this a vigilante double homicide, or is it a case of mistaken identity? The Ice Cream Man Murder Retrial. Coverage continues weekdays at 8, 7 central on 